So your brain is this prediction machine. Um, it has this model of the world um, encoded in the pattern of cortical um, columns. And this model is basically your brain's best guess, best working hypothesis about what's going on in the world and what's in the world. The, this particular model leads to very specific predictions about what things should look like, what things should do, what should actually be happening next uh, if the model is good. And if the, the model is, is good and the model is working perfectly well, then the brain's predictions about you know, the sensory information that it receives in the following moment will all be correct, and the brain doesn't need to know about that sensory information. However, what about when things go wrong? So we looked at the hollow face example where the, we thought the brain, sorry, we thought the face was a uh, normal convex face um, and, and your brain contained a model of a normal convex face mask. It's only when it started to rotate that the brain uh, realized that its predictions about what should be happening, the predictions about the sense information, uh, were, were not fulfilled. The, the predictions are wrong, and the brain needs to know that its, its model is wrong. It needs to update the model. So now we'll actually look at what's going on in the brain um, and how the brain actually updates its model. OK, so let's go to the board. So here is our usual um, diagram. Now we are now fully working in our more modern down uh, information flow. So we have our upper level model here. So this is high in order and this is low order. So we're making predictions. So the predictions ultimately come from the top end here and they lead to predictions in the, the middle and then they, uh, the medium order and this leads to predictions in the low order which is basically predicting the sensor information. And we saw um, in our example last time that if this prediction was correct, nothing needs to happen. However, let's have a look. Is this prediction going to be correct? So, so here we can see the low order is making very specific predictions about sensor information. Is it correct? No, it's not correct. Um, there is uh, a mismatch between the prediction. Um, so this is the prediction, the predicted pattern of um, cortical column activation by the sensory information, uh, but in truth, in reality, um, you can see the pink cortical columns are activated. So there's been a mistake, there's an error, a prediction error. The brain failed to predict sensory information and it needs to know about it. So what actually happens is this, uh, these cortical columns that are actually activated, now because the um, the sensory information wasn't correctly predicted, this information is not suppressed, it's not inhibited, it's not ignored. It's actually passed upwards. Um, so you can see in these pink um, columns, which I basically colored pink to show that these represent prediction errors. It's, it's just information that's passing upwards. So the prediction errors are generated here at the lower end, and then they're passed upwards through to the, the medium order and then upwards through to the higher order. And so the, this prediction error, as it's called, uh, goes all the way up to the, to the highest level of the model uh, and basically is, is basically informing that part of the cortex, these higher level, higher order levels of the cortical hierarchy that they've made a mistake. And they need to update their model because their model is clearly not working. It's failing to predict sensory information. So how does the brain then deal with that? Well, prediction errors, as I said, tell the brain that the model is, is incorrect. The model is not working. It needs to be updated. How, do you, how does the brain update the model? How does it know when the model has been fixed, if you like? Well, when it, 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 it stops producing prediction errors. So when the model again starts correctly predicting sensory information um, from moment to moment, um, then we know that the, um, the model has been fixed. So the, model, the brain never really knows, as I've always said before, whether a, a model is true. Uh, it, it can only go on these prediction errors. Is it, is it successful or, or is it failing to predict sensory information? Um, so the brain, of course, that is measurable. The brain can measure 
how badly it's doing in to, by, by basically measuring how much prediction error is coming up uh, from the lower cortices up to the, the higher order levels of the, of the cortical hierarchy. And it can, it can change the model until it reduces that prediction error. And when it reduces that prediction error, in other words, when it becomes better again at predicting sensory information, then it knows that its model is, 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 is better. It's a more optimal model, a more functional uh, model um, of, of, of the environment. So let's have a look at our original model. So this was our original model. And of course, we had this, these prediction errors. So what does the brain do? Well, it updates its model. So we can see the original model here at the upper end. Um, so the brain says, OK, this, this kind of uh, higher order model of what's, what I'm looking at, what's actually in the world, is clearly not working. So I'm going to update this. And this leads to a slightly altered prediction, again, from the highest order to the lower uh, middle order, uh, and which leads to, obviously, a, an updated prediction here about what's going on here in the lower order, uh, what should be going on in the next moment in the lower order uh, cortices, and then that leads to an updated prediction about sensory information. How do we measure the success of this update? Well, simply upon by um, whether or not it correctly predicts the sensory information. So in the updated model, again, here's our sensory information, the same sensory information as before. However, now, ah, great, we get a match. So now the model has been updated, and the model correctly now correctly predicts sensory information. Um, and so there's no prediction errors now that are passing up from the lower to higher order, so the model is good. And the brain is doing this all the time. It's a cyclic process. It's, it's not something that kind of happens every second. It's kind of like a rolling process. Um, so we can kind of summarize this, and this is kind of important, which I put it on its own slide here. So, so the brain generates a model of the world using information, and, we, and you now, now know in, in great detail how that model is constructed um, and, and you know, how all that works. You're kind of an expert on, on, on world model building by the brain now. This model is then used to make very specific predictions about sensory information. And if the model's good, then uh, you're, it should be able to predict the sensory information that comes into the brain in the following moments. Um, these predictions are then compared with the actual sensory information. If there's any discrepancies, in other words, if there's information, um, sensory information that wasn't predicted, these generate prediction errors. And these prediction errors then are passed upwards through the hierarchy um, and used to refine the model. So we get a new model. And this new model generates new predictions about expected sensory information. And hopefully, then it's better and uh, um, it's um, you know, reduced any prediction errors. So, so the brain is always, every single moment, the brain is always comparing its predictions about you know, kind of the, the, the immediate future. Uh, kind of, I guess. Um, you know, it's, it's not something that updates every, every few seconds or something like that. It's, it's a rolling process, as I said. So all the time your brain is, 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 has this model, it's using the model to make predictions, um, and it's always comparing those predictions with actually what, comes, you know, what, what, what actually happens. It's comparing its predicted sensory information to the actual sensory information. And if there's an error, that is processed and the brain updates its model. It's a, it's a beautifully efficient way of working because it avoids having to you know, reconstruct the entire model uh, or build a new model uh, every, every moment. You can actually simply use the working model and only update it as necessary. OK, so let's summarize now. Uh, so we've now completely abandoned our uh, upwards bottom-up um, processing of sensory information uh, for something much more, uh, much more model and biologically realistic, um, kind of state-of-the-art neuroscience, the way we think about um, sensory processing. So we have this multi-layered model, which I've got, I've shown kind of three levels here, going from three down to two down to one, but of course in truth there's, uh, I mean, there's more levels in the hierarchy. Um, and you have these high-level predictions which start from the top, which are passed down um, to, so these high-level predictions predict the, basically the pattern of cortical column activation in, the, um, in this lower order uh, area of the cortex, which then predicts 
um, the pattern of activation in this lowest level, uh, and this lowest level is essentially predicting the sensory information. Um, so this is why this green, green arrows, which I've now obscured, um, are thicker, because most of the information is flowing downwards in terms of actual predictions. Um, and it's only error signals, these prediction errors, that actually are passed up. So if, if the, the low-level model that's receiving the sensory information from the environment is incorrect, then that information is passed upwards in the form of error signals upwards through the hierarchy. So this highest level model can be updated uh, with the aim of reducing prediction error. Great. Fabulous. This is, this is wonderful. So we've, we've, we've kind of, we've now, we've come all the way from talking about, you know, action potentials and synapses to a really um, kind of, a really kind of modern um, understanding of the way perception works and the way that your model is constructed uh, and the way that it's actually tested against sensor information. So your model is, 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 is of course updated all the time, but it's always being tested. It always has sensor information to answer to. It doesn't, the model is, the construction of the model is not driven by sensor information. We, we understand that now. Um, but it's, it's always got sensory information to answer to. Um, if the model fails, the model is not successful in predicting sensory information, uh, then it needs to be scrapped. Well, not scrapped, bad word. Uh, it needs to be updated until it does successfully predict uh, information, uh, sensory information. So, so, you're, so you're, you're, you're this dynamically updating world model uh, is, is, is constantly testing itself against uh, sensory information. It's only when it gets these predictions wrong, when it, it fails the test, um, that it actually processes sensory information. So there's a kind of a slightly strange uh, consequence of a strange conclusion in that you, when you're looking out at the world, you, your brain is really ignoring the vast majority of sensory information that actually enters through uh, your sensory apparatus because it, it kind of knows what's out there, really. Um, and so, so the vast majority of sensory information is actually is filtered out. It's suppressed. It's correctly predicted. It's, it's extinguished uh, at this lowest level of the cortical hierarchy. Uh, and and you, it never becomes part of your world model, um, um, which is kind of a, an interesting... It, it leads, it's kind of very, very counterintuitive, I think, this idea that, that your brain is re really is ignoring the vast, ma vast majority of information that you receive. And that only, your brain only know, kind of absorbs information or processes information when, it, when, it, when, it's, when, it, when there's kind of surprising information that it fails to predict. Okay, great. So uh, anyway, um, so in the next video, what I want to do is, this next video will be fairly short, I think, and I want to just kind of um, look forward to um, the next unit. So the next unit, uh, we're going to change gears and actually go down to the molecular level. Uh, and we're going to start thinking about receptors because we're kind of, we're gearing ourselves up now to bring psychedelics into the frame. We haven't really talked about psychedelics hardly at all in the last, in the last you know, four units, maybe at the very beginning, but that's basically about it. So, um, so yes, yeah, so, so in the next unit, we're going to think about the way these uh, drugs actually interact with receptors and things like that. Anyway, 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 anyway. Okay, so uh, I'll see you in the next video, and yeah, that's it.